Hello and welcome to DTWGAD Prep. Welcome. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be treating 10 questions, okay, 10 most difficult GED geometry questions you can ever encounter in your GED test, okay, and um, I've also done some several videos on the GED geometry section. You would find all the videos in the GED, GED crash um, playlist, which I will leave the link in the video description box of this video. So, but for today, I'm going to be treating 10 questions, and this involves looking for the missing dimension. Okay, you know, most times the GED geometry questions, they don't just go direct, like find the area of the parallelogram. No, they would give you the area, give you one dimension, and tell you to find the missing dimension. Okay, so this, this uh, video is all about helping you find the missing dimension in the various um, math formulas, the formula for the fair, you know, when you have the arrow cube, how do you find R itself? Okay, we're going to be going through the math formula sheet. Okay, you can get the math formula sheet on our website, dtwgedprep.com. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. Okay, and also, you know, link to summary notes, study guides, free practice uh, questions on your maths you can use, and also the link to my course, okay, where you can, you know, go through that course to quickly take you through the maths, the GED maths, and also um, you can join uh, the Facebook group that I created, which is over 15,000 now members. I will leave the link to everything in the video description box, and also if you re require one on one math tutorial, you can contact me. All right, so to get on to this question one okay of the gd geometry practice okay so here it says a parallelogram has an area of this okay if its height is this what is the measure of the space now from our formula sheet you don't need to cram the formulas because you are given the formula sheet would be given so the formula sheet it would be on your dashboard so you don't need to memorize any formula okay so from our formula sheet the area of a parallelogram is a is equal to base times the height okay base times the height of the parallelogram okay this would be the height here okay? all right so if the height is 14 centimeter what is the base and we've been given the area as this so you put for a a is equal to 252 and our height h is equal to what 14 centimeters so let's put this here so a is this you know just substitute we're looking for b b is unknown because b is unknown that's what we're looking for times your h you know b and h um what um uh binds them is what multiplication so times what 14. so to get our b we divide both sides by what 14 divide by 14 this 14 will be cancelled out. We're well, left here with just B. And 5252 five, divided by 14 is 18. Okay, so B is equal to 18 centimeter. Okay, because here we have centimeter square and here we have just centimeter. One centimeter will cancel out one centimeter. We're just left with one centimeter. That's why we have B is equal to 18 centimeter. So our base is 18 centimeter on this question let's go to the next one okay question two of the GED geometry practice test says the tri uh, trapezoid below has a perimeter of this what is the sum of the length of its missing sides okay when we talk about perimeter perimeter is all about the submission of all sides of any shape whichever shape it is is the submission of all sides okay so it says the perimeter of this is this Okay, so P is equal to, that's the perimeter, P is equal to, let's give this unknown side as X1 and X2. Okay, so we have here, we can just put the known sides are 42 plus 36, then plus the unknown sides are what X1 plus X2. And we've been told that P is 146, right? So we have 146 equal to, this plus this would give us uh, 878, okay, plus x1 plus x2. So to get x1 plus x2, we take this here. So we have 46. When you're taking a number over to the other side of the equation, it becomes, because here it's a positive, when it crosses the sign changes to what? Negative. 
or you can say subtract um, 78 from both sides. Okay, either way. Okay, so here 146 minus 78 will give us what 68 equal to x1 plus x2. So here our answer, because it says what is the sum of the length of its missing side. So the sum of the length of the missing side is what 68 inches. Don't forget the unit inches. Okay, so this is the answer for question two. Let's go to the next question. Now question three of our GD geometry practice. It says the area of a square is this. What is the length of a side of the square? Length of a side, you can see a side, okay? And from our formula sheets, the area formula for area of the square is what S square, okay? And it has told us our area is what? One, two, one, one twenty, one. So what to look for the length of a side that's one side s okay all right you know a square has all sides what's equal so if this is s this is s this is s and also this is s okay so one side all sides are equal so what we just look for s alone so here the area of the square is one to one equal to s square now when you have something like this in maths s square and you are told to just find only s. What you do is you square root both sides. Okay? When you square root s square, it's just going to give us 1s. Okay? And when you square root 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, it's going to give us 11. So s is equal to 11 centimeter. All right? Do you get me? When you have this in math, you have s square, s square okay? And um, um, one and another number by the side. When you want to get just one value for s, what you do is you find the square root of both sides, okay? And I think I've explained this in a, in a separate video, which you can find on my channel, okay? If I've not really, if I've not done that, um, I'm going to check and do do this after explain these powers after this video okay but this is what you do in maths all right so when you have something like this you are just to find only s you square root both sides so you find the square root of this it gives you s the square root of one to one it gives you 11 so our answer is what's 11 this is the length of the side of this square 11. let's go to the next question number four says the perimeter of a rectangle is 72 inches if the width is for 14 inches what is the length of the rectangle so the width is 14 inches inches the area that's the area is what uh, the perimeter i mean perimeter is what 72 inches so what is the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle it is p from our formula sheet p is equal to 2l that's 2 times the length plus 2 times the width okay from here we know that p is 72 we don't know our length so let's put it like, let's leave it as 2l plus we know our width as 14 that would be 2 times what 14 so we have 72 equal to 2l plus what is 2 times 14 that's 28 let's take 28 here okay and leave just 2l here you know we're looking for l taking 28 here we have 72 taking a positive 28 down here it becomes a negative 28 equal to 2l and what is 72 minus 28 that will give us 44 equal to 2l now to get l you know this is l, the is bonded by a multiplication sign okay so to get l what we do is we divide both sides by 2 so 2 would cancel out here to just leave us l alone and you know whatever you do to one side of the equation you also do to the same okay that's what i did on that um square root in both sides when you square root one side you have to square root the other side okay so 42 44 divided by 2 will give us what 22 so l is equal to 22 inches okay so this is how you find your length of this particular rectangle given your perimeter Number four, 
Here it says, a cylindrical storage tank used to store a chemical has a volume of this and a height of this. You can see this fraction. The GED always put in fractions in their, in their word problems, in their geometric uh, problems, you know, just to test your knowledge of fractions. You might not really just see um, fraction questions given directly. They will just be in your question as word problems. So you should know how to you know, work with fractions. And the best thing about um, the GED is that the fractions given can be easily converted to your decimal points, okay? I mean, your decimal figures, all right? So this three over four is always good to know, you know some similar fractions and their conversion to their decimal uh, numbers, okay? Three over four is 0.75. And one over two is what? 0 0.5. Okay, these are the popular ones um, that usually come out from the GED test. So you should, you know, get to know them. One over three is 0 0.33. Okay, this is 0. Point, sorry, I didn't add the five. Okay, 0 0.50. Okay. So know this easy conversion from fraction to decimal. Okay. So from here, now you see we're given the volume, we're given the height, and we're told to find the radius of the tank okay that's what we're told to find the height is what 21 three quarter we're told to find the radius the volume is 2500 cubic feet okay so from our gd formula sheet if the volume of a cylinder is what by r square h all right we are given our v as this so let's put it put it here 2500 our pi from uh, the GED, it would always state pi as what, 3.14. So we have 3.14 times, we're looking for R, so we leave R as R square, since we don't know R, times H, H is what, 21 three quarter. We can quickly change this as what, 21.75. Okay, just add this 0.5 to 21, okay? 0.75 to 21. When you add it, you have 21.75. Okay, so we have 21.75. All right. So what we do here is, I would prefer that we multiply this. Let's multiply these two numbers here. So we have 2,500 equal to this times this would give us a 68.295 uh, times R square. Now to let r square be alone here so we can find r we divide both sides by 68295 divide by 68295 and this would cancel so we're left only with r square here this divided by this would give us punching your calculator there's a calculator um there will always be calculator on your dashboard for questions like this calculator will be allowed Okay, so we have this. So it means R square is equal to 36.60 and it says to the nearest cubic feet. So we're gonna, you know, approximate very soon. So here, as I said earlier on, we have R squared. So to get just R alone, we have to square root this. And when you square root one side, you have to find the square root of the other side. And to the square root of this is 6.05, okay? So from here, we're told to, to um, what is the radius of the tank to the nearest cubic feet. So to the nearest cubic feet, R will be what? The nearest cubic feet, that is a whole number. You look, you look at um, after, after the decimal point, you check for the next number. Is this number up to five? It's not up to five. Okay, so it means we cannot approximate a one to add to this six. Okay, that's the way approximation is done. Okay, so we can just, we have to just leave six alone. So R to the nearest, the radius of the nearest um, cubic feet is what six, what, sorry, this shouldn't be cubic feet, just to the nearest feet is six what feet. Okay, so this is our answer, six feet. All right, you see questions like this, it might not, um, you know, the GED questions like a lot of text to get you a bit worried and confused. But all you need to know is just bring out what you need. Okay, the values you need, that's all. And, you know, apply your formula. All right. So this is the answer for this. Let's go to the next number. 
this uh, question six says, um, the area of a triangle with a height of 12 feet is 64 square feet. What is the base of the triangle in the nearest feet? What is the formula for the area of the triangle? Is what half base times what height? Okay. So we've been given the area as what? 64 square feet. So we have 64 equal to half. We've been given our height. We don't know our base. We're told to find the base. Okay. So B times our height is what? 12. Okay. So what I'll do here with this fraction, this half, is to just say, um, I can just cross this here, or I can simply cancel it out here. So I'll say two here, one, two here, six. So here we're left with 64 equal to B times what? Six, right? So to get B, we divide both sides by six. This would cancel, we're left with B here. And 64 divided by six will get what? A 10.66. Okay, so B is equal to a 10.66. But here it says to the nearest fit. Okay, to the nearest fit means we're looking at the whole number. Okay, so we have 10 here. Immediately after the decimal point, is this number greater than 5 or equal to 5? It is greater than 5. So it means we can approximate a 1 to add to here. So we finally have 1 plus this 10 will give us what? 11. Okay, so to the nearest feet, our base is what? 11 feet. Do you see that? Okay, this is our answer. Okay, most, well, I've noticed most GD questions, you always see to the nearest feet, to the nearest tenth of feet, to the nearest hundred of something you get. So you need to know how to approximate correctly. All right, and, and most of them usually do, you know, you have a box, you don't have options. You just have a box that you have to write the answer. All right, so please, when you have that, please make sure you write your feet, okay? Your unit of measurement and approximate well. Okay, so number seven, we have a question here. It says seven of the GED geometry practice. It says the volume of a tennis ball in a shape of a fair is this cubic inches. What is the radius of the tennis ball in inches? So we're looking for the radius. We know the volume of the fair. All right, so we we'll apply, what's the formula for the volume of the fair? It's V is equal to four over three pi R cube. Okay, so we're looking for the radius. We know V as what? Five, two, three point three four. Okay, equal to four over three. Pi is what? Three point one four, then times R cube. Pi will always be given as three point one four, okay? You would see it in the in the question and the, your GED formula sheet. So from here, what do I do? There's nothing to cancel out. So I would prefer, let us just take this three. Should we just take this three and multiply here? Yes, we can do that. Just take this three. Let this three multiply here. So we have 523.34 times three equal to four times 3.14 times R cube. All right. So next is to get R cube alone, R cube, because that's the target. R cube has to stand alone. All right, to make R cube stand alone, we can divide both sides by this four times 3.14. Okay, four times 3.14. So this would cancel out. So we're left just with R cube here. If you punch in your calculator, do all this, um, you know, calculations on your calculator, you should get a 125 all right you should get a 125 and from here to get r alone so this so it's 125 equal to r um, cube so which also means r cube equal to 125 so to get r alone what you do is you cube root when you cube root r cube it gives you r so you also have to cube root what this um, number 125 and the cube root of 125 is a 5 all right i hope you know how to find cube roots i've done a video on powers and roots okay you should you should uh watch that video i think i used the calculator to teach how to find cube roots and all that so that video would help you all right i will leave the link in the description box okay so for you to learn further so the cube root of 125 when you use your gd calculator you will get a five, 
all right so our radius here is what five foot in all right so let's go to the next question our next question is a question on cone okay so this is question eight of the gd geometric practice test a question on cone it says a cone that holds 30 cubic inches of cereal has a diameter of six inches to the nearest inch what is the height of the cone so it has it told us that the diameter is what six inches you know the diameter is from uh, a line that crosses the center of the circle that touches two points of the circle and passes through the center so this is the diameter if the diameter is six then it means the radius which is half of a diameter from here to here is three from here to here is three so the radius is equal to three okay and what's the formula for the volume of a cone the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 by r square h okay we know that the volume is 30 v is 30 equal to 1 over 3 our pi is times 3.14 you know pi is what pi is is uh 3.14 on our formula sheet our r square you can see thank god i just quickly did the r for, from here you were given the diameter so you must know how to find the radius from a diameter okay when you're giving diameter the radius is just simply half of the diameter okay so here is uh, um, r is equal to three so that is three square okay three raised to the power two then times h we're looking for h okay that's the height so from here we have 30 is equal to 1 over 3 times 3.14 times 3 square is what 9 times h okay i can cancel out 3 here okay that's uh i'm just breaking this down for simplification but you can just use your calculator okay so 3 will be here all right so from here we are left with 30 is equal to 3.14 times 3 times h so I will divide both sides by 3.14 times 3. 3.14 times 3. This would cancel out. We are left just here with H. That you know that's the goal to make H stay alone, stand the unknown, stand alone on one side of the equation. When I do this on my calculator, 30 divide by this by this. Okay. What I will get is what a 3.18. All right. So H is equal to 3.18. And it doesn't stop there. It says to the nearest inch. So to the nearest inch, you can see here after the three, after the decimal point, we just have one. All right. One is not up to five. So we can't approximate here. So H is just equal to three inches. Okay. So this is our answer. Three inches all right let's go to the next question so we have question uh question nine of the ged geometry practice it says if the area of a circle the area is 16 pi okay you can see this now put in pi all right so this is not telling us to this question is not like telling us to put pi as equal to 3.14 all right you see what i mean here if the area of the circle is 16 pi that's square feet then what is its diameter what's the area of the circle formula it is a is equal to pi r square so the question is asking for its diameter but the area is this pi r square so we have to look for the radius first with the value of the radius we can now get the diameter all right so here this is a is what 16 pi equal to pi r square so here we can just easily to make r square stand alone we divide both sides by pi we divide by pi this pi cancels here and it cancels out this pi here so we're left here with 16 equal to r square okay and which is the same as r square is equal to 16. So as I said earlier on, to get just r, we do what? We square root both sides. So when we square root 16, we get 4. 
All right, so our radius is four. It doesn't stop there. It says what is its diameter. Okay, don't just stop there and just pick the option four. What is its diameter? So the diameter will be two times what? D is two times R. Okay, two times radius. That will be two times four, and which is what? Eight. So the diameter is what? Eight feet. That will be the diameter of this circle, eight feet. All right, so this is our answer. Okay, now to the final question here, all right, of our question 10 of the GED geometry practice. It says here, yeah, we have a lot of fractions. It says here, the volume of a rectangular prism, whose height is this and length is this, is this. Calculate its width to the nearest inch. Now, what is the formula for finding the volume of a prism, rectangular prism? It is V equal to L times what? Width times your height. Okay? So we know our V as this. Let us just, you know, put our 3 over 4 as, you know, points. So this would be 80.75. This is 11.75. And our half here is 8.50. Okay? So our V volume is 180.75 equal to, are we given our length? Yes. Our length is uh, 11.75. We're told to find our width. So the width is the unknown. So leave it as W. Our H is what? 8.50. So from here to get our width, standard, to make it stand alone, what we do is we divide both sides by this 11.75 times 8.50 times 8.50. So this would cancel out. This would cancel out. We're left here with just W. When you punch in your calculator, 18 this divided by this times uh, and this, okay, it would give us what? 1.809 so w our width is what 1.809 inches okay but here it says to the nearest what inch so to the nearest inch we can approximate this since immediately after one we have a number that is greater than five so we can approximate and add the one here so one plus one is two so our final answer is two inches to the nearest inch. Okay, so two inches. So thank you for staying tuned to the end of these 10 questions focusing on the GED um, geometry. Okay, so I know that as you watch this video to the end, any geometry questions, you know, I've done a video on how to find the perimeter and area of irregular uh, shapes and figures. Okay, I will leave all the videos are in the vid a geometry crash um, course, the playlist. And also you can get those videos on my course. And after the course, there are several practice questions, you know, you can use to, you know, practice and practice and practice. It's needed to pass your GED maths. Okay, so thank you for staying to the end of this video. Finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ, for he's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. He's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last, and also give us that life here on earth, heaven on earth. Give us strength, joy, peace, and love here. So please, he's calling you today. Open your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior, and turn from every of your old ways, you know, embrace righteousness, holiness, and he's going to give you every beauty for your ashes. Your sadness is going to give you joy in abundance. All right. So thank you for staying tuned. You are destined to win in your GED test and also in life. Okay. And also don't forget to subscribe and share this channel. Take care and see you in our next video.